I've received a lot of requests for this one. I'll be giving my reaction and breakdown of the famous iPhone 1 presentation by Steve Jobs from 2007. Jobs has always been a great speaker, but this presentation is what made him a living legend when it came out to how to put out a new product to the world. His presentation became the unofficial public speaking standard that all CEOs in Silicon Valley are now measured against. After this, they all wanted to be like Steve Jobs. We'll look at the first eight minutes of an 80 minute presentation. I'll put links below to the original video and to other public speaking resources. Big picture, there are unconfirmed reports that Steve Jobs practiced this presentation over a hundred times. Some people say he practiced as many as 200 times if you count all the times he practiced in the car, the elevator, the shower. But the good news is for you, virtually everything that I will point out are skills that you can put into your own presentations. We'll watch one chunk at a time, I'll identify some strengths, and then I'll wrap up with one suggestion for improvement. And since I teach college, I'll give him a letter grade at the end. But will you agree with my grade? What grade would you give Jobs? Let me know in the comments below. So let's start right at the beginning of the presentation. This is a day I've been looking forward to for two and a half years. Every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. And Apple has been, well, first of all, one's very fortunate if you get to work on just one of these in your career. Apple's been very fortunate. It's been able to introduce a few of these into the world. In 1984, we introduced the Macintosh. It didn't just change Apple. It changed the whole computer industry. In 2001, we introduced the first iPod. And it didn't just, it didn't just change the way we all listen to music. It changed the entire music industry. Well, today, we're introducing three revolutionary products of this class. The first one is a widescreen iPod with touch controls. The second is a revolutionary mobile phone. And the third is a breakthrough internet communications device. So, three things. A widescreen iPod with touch controls, a revolutionary mobile phone, and a breakthrough internet communications device. An iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. An iPod, a phone. Are you getting it? These are not three separate devices. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, today Apple is going to reinvent the phone. And here it is. <laughs> no. Actually, here it is, but we're going to leave it there for now. Now, far and away, the best part about this presentation so far is that he's extremely clear and concise about his central message. Apple is about revolutionary products that change the industry. Great speeches have a great central theme. 
And he's really clear about it right from the start. He says it in plain English, he uses short sentences, and he uses this central theme about revolution to drive the rest of the presentation. A revolutionary product comes along, it changed the whole computer industry, it changed the entire music industry. We're introducing three revolutionary products of this class. This is no ordinary day and no ordinary product. Everything he says supports this theme. Apple is once again going to revolutionize the industry. Next, let's talk about his voice. He sounds confident. Most of his confidence is coming from his voice, and there are three qualities, vocal qualities, to create that confident sound. First, he uses a strong, consistent volume. He's using a microphone because he's in a huge space, but even so, he's speaking a little above a typical conversational volume level. When we speak just a click or two above how we would in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, we automatically sound more confident. So he's not just speaking, he's speaking up and declaring his message. A second vocal quality is that he speaks each word clearly and deliberately. You can tell he has chosen his words carefully. He enunciates and articulates so each word matters. He speaks right through each word. He doesn't mumble blur the words together, or trail off at the end of sentences. Third, the most obvious vocal quality to me is that he uses dramatic pauses at the end of sentences and after key ideas. In the first minute or so, he uses a pattern of a short sentence and a pause, usually around a one second pause after each sentence. A handful of his pauses are two or even three seconds if you don't count the time where people are clapping. These are what you call dramatic pauses. Pauses like this let the importance of the message and the moment sink in. Many public speakers struggle with pauses. We tend to put in filler words instead, but Jobs pauses silently. You could hear a pin drop. These three related vocal qualities, volume, deliberate enunciation, and pauses with no fillers create an extremely confident sound. It creates the impression that he really believes what he's saying. So let's watch a little bit more. So, before we get into it, let me, uh, let me talk about a category of things. The most advanced phones are called smartphones, so they say. And uh, they typically combine a phone plus some email capability, plus they say it's the internet, sort of the baby internet in the one device, and they all have these plastic little keyboards on them. Uh, and uh, the problem is that they're not so smart and they're not so easy to use. So if you kind of make a you know, business school 101 graph of the smart axis and the easy to use axis, phones, regular cell phones are kind of right there. They're not so smart and they're you know, not so easy to use. Um, but smartphones are definitely a little smarter, but they actually are harder to use. They're really complicated. Just for the basic stuff, people have a hard time figuring out how to use them. Well, we don't want to do either one of these things. What we want to do is make a leapfrog product that is way smarter than any mobile device has ever been and super easy to use. This is what iPhone is. Okay? So. We're going to reinvent the phone. Now, we're going to start with a revolutionary user interface. Is the result of years of research and development. And, of course, it's an interplay of hardware and software. Now, why do we need a revolutionary user interface? I mean, here's four smartphones, right? Motorola Q, the BlackBerry. Palm Treo, Nokia E62, the usual suspects. And what's wrong with their user interfaces? Well, the problem with them is really sort of in the bottom 40 there. It's, it's this stuff right here. They all have these keyboards that are there whether you need them or not to be there. And they all have these control buttons that are fixed in plastic and are the same for every application. Well, every application wants a slightly different user interface, a slightly optimized set of buttons just for it. And what happens if you think of a great idea six months from now? You can't run around and add a button to these things. They're already shipped. So what do you do? It doesn't work because the buttons and the controls can't change. They can't change for each application, and they can't change down the road if you think of another great idea you want to add to this product. Well, how do you solve this? 
Hmm. It turns out we have solved it. We solved it in computers 20 years ago. We solved it with a bitmap screen that could display anything we want, put any user interface up, and a pointing device. We solved it with the mouse, right? We solved this problem. So how are we going to take this to a mobile device? Well, what we're going to do is get rid of all these buttons and just make a giant screen. A giant screen. Now, how are we going to communicate this? We don't want to carry around a mouse, right? So what are we going to do? Oh, a stylus, right? We're going to use a stylus. No. <laughs> no. Who wants a stylus? You have to get them and put them away and you lose them. Yuck. Nobody wants a stylus. So let's not use a stylus. We're going to use the best pointing device in the world. We're going to use a pointing device that we're all born with. We're born with 10 of them. We're going to use our fingers. We're going to touch this with our fingers. And we have invented a new technology called multi-touch, which is phenomenal. It works like magic. You don't need a stylus. It's far more accurate than any touch display that's ever been shipped. It ignores unintended touches. It's super smart. You can do multi-finger gestures on it. And boy, have we patented it. So, so. Now let's talk about his content. He does something really smart in this chunk. He uses a problem-solution logic to build his message. He speaks for a while about the existing problems with other phones and devices out there on the market to talk about the way iPhone solves those problems. Existing smartphones have too many limitations, and in contrast, the iPhone has a huge touchscreen, easy interface, and powerful software. This problem-solution design shows he really understands his audience. He's not just speaking in a vacuum about what he thinks is cool about the new phone. He speaks to his listeners' pressing needs, their sense of urgency. We call this the exigence of the situation. The secret to almost every great speech that's ever been given is that the speaker is speaking to the felt need that listeners have. And you can tell by the way they respond that his listeners really are ready to hear what Jobs is saying. They are anticipating that Apple is finally going to solve these known problems. He's also a master at building anticipation. As mentioned, he pauses like a champion. That creates anticipation. But he also creates anticipation through his message design. We saw this in the first chunk we looked at when he talked about how they'd be introducing three revolutionary products. An iPod, a phone, <laughs> and an internet communicator. An iPod, a phone. Are you getting it? That was building anticipation. And he has this more here in this recent chunk leading up to how we'll be able to use our finger to touch the screen rather than a stylus or some other clumsy device. We don't want to carry around a mouse, right? We're going to use a stylus. No, we're going to use our fingers. That anticipation adds some drama and showmanship to his message. He's not just sharing facts and figures, he's taking us on a journey. We've been very lucky to have brought a few revolutionary user interfaces to the market in our time. First was the mouse. The second was the click wheel. And now we're going to bring multi-touch to the market. And each of these revolutionary user interfaces has made possible a revolutionary product, the Mac, the iPod, and now the iPhone. So, a revolutionary user interface. We're going to build on top of that with software. Now, software on mobile phones is like, it's like baby software. It's not so powerful. And today, we're going to show you a software breakthrough. Software that's at least five years ahead of what's on any other phone. Now, how do we do this? Well, we start with a strong foundation. iPhone runs OS X. In this last chunk, let's talk about some of the visual elements of how he presents and his visual aids. Jobs likes to walk around the stage, but he's not pacing nervously. He's walking with ease across a massive stage, and he's walking with a purpose, in part to connect 
with a big audience throughout the auditorium. In a situation like this, you have to make it more dynamic by taking up more space. He's also gesturing really well. He uses textbook gestures, really. He has a good home base where he brings his hands together at about belt level, and he's making basic gestures once or twice per sentence, and then back to his home base. He also has what you might call a second home base, where he hangs his arms down by his side, and looks really comfortable in that position as well. To me, those are the two best places to keep your hands when you're not actively gesturing. His visual aids are really clear, simple, and use very few words. Many less experienced presenters fill their slides with data, diagrams, lots of text, but that's a mistake. By comparison, his slides are really minimalistic. Sometimes his slides only show an image and use no words. This is a less is more approach that's usually the best approach when it comes to visual aids. You'll also notice he rarely looks back at his slides. Many presenters will turn away from their listeners and look at their slides most of the time, but he's mostly facing his listeners. And I'm guessing he has another screen in front of him with his outline on it as well, so he can just glance at it to stay on track. So let's talk big picture advice and then I'll grade his presentation. I really have only one minor improvement I would suggest, and it comes down to my personal preference. It's not as noticeable in the short segments we're looking at today, but I began to get tired of his long dramatic pauses that I watched, the more I watched. And it's the same feeling I get when I'm watching a Broadway type show or a musical on a stage. Sometimes it almost feels as if he's pausing to cue the audience or me to applaud. And I don't like it when stage actors pose and wait and make me feel like I'm obligated to applaud. And there are moments in this presentation where I got tired of that dramatic mechanism. I think that's mostly me, my own personal preference, but I also got the feeling that there were some long pauses where the audience was also confused and not sure if they were supposed to clap when he paused. Either way, that's the only minor change that I would suggest. Feel free to disagree with me. So what grade would I give this presentation? Well, I would give it a D minus. I thought most of this was garbage. Just kidding. Of course, this is obviously an A plus presentation. Everything came together to make this a winner. The timing was right for the iPhone. It was in the end a great product and Jobs knew he had a winner. He had every reason to deliver his message with complete confidence. Looking back, his presentation and the release of iPhone 1 did exactly as he predicted. It represented a revolutionary moment that changed phones forever. So a question for you, what grade would you give Jobs on this presentation? Do you really think he practiced this one or 200 times? Do you think that's just an urban legend? And of course, what else did I miss? And be sure to look in the description section of the video for some free public speaking resources for you. Until next time, thanks, God bless, and I will see you soon.